Hello and welcome to today's session on developmental and learning theories described by Lev Vygotsky. Vygotsky suggested that children developed as they participated in various forms of social interaction. His theories focused on how children engaged with others around them. According to Vygotsky's premise, children have four elementary mental functions, namely attention, sensation, perception, and memory. And through interaction with their environment and others, these functions could develop into more refined mental strategies called higher mental functions. An underlying theory is that children generally construct their learning through interaction with their parents, teachers, peers, or someone who has a better understanding than the learner themselves, basically with anyone who has a higher ability level than them. This abler person becomes known as the more knowledgeable other, a model for the child to imitate and regulate their behavior and develop language competence. The child tries to understand the actions and instructions provided by the abler person, internalize the information, and then manage their own performance. Having said this, a more knowledgeable other can also be a more capable peer and not necessarily someone older. Let me give you an example. When a child is given a jigsaw puzzle to piece it together, it can be an overwhelming task. However, if the child is guided by a parent, through demonstration and describing a few basic techniques, then the task will become less formidable. Through understanding that they need to separate all the pieces with edges and corners, and by putting them to one side, and then grouping pieces of the same color, the child will eventually become more competent in learning how to piece things together, individually, without assistance. Vygotsky believed the abler person empowered the child to expand their base of knowledge and use higher order thinking skills, thus higher mental functions. These functions are distinguished by more independent learning and thinking on the part of the learner and require social cooperation and collaboration to promote cognitive development and ability. What is leading the learning is a combination of the more knowledgeable other, the individual learner, and sociocultural factors. A second term introduced by Vygotsky was the zone of proximal development which distinguishes what a child can do with or without help from an abler person. This theory was developed to challenge the idea that children's intelligence could be evaluated on academic and knowledge-based tests. The zone of guidance allows the learner to transition from a set of skills he or she already has to a more sophisticated skills set, which generally help in going beyond what is already known in response to the environment and society. For Vygotsky, the purpose of education was to provide learners with experiences that are within the zone of proximal development to foster individual learning and growth of higher order skills and strategies. And that brings us to the end of today's session on developmental and learning theories described by Lev Vygotsky. If you would like to explore more on any of the topics discussed, click on the links provided at the end of this unit. As always, remember to observe what is happening in your classes and be a reflective practitioner.